Act One of Doctor Faustus. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Tragical History of Doctor Faustus, by Christopher Marlowe, from the Quarto of sixteen o four. Dramatis Personae. Chorus. Read by Martin Giessen. Good Angel. Read by Avaí. Evil Angel, Cardinal, and Third Scholar. Read by Dennis Sayers. Doctor Faustus, Vintner, First Friar, Covetousness and Gluttony. Read by Algy Pug. Mephistopheles, Knight, First Scholar, Envy, and Narrator. Read by Elizabeth Clett. Lucifer. Read by CalmDragon.net. Wagner. Read by Ariel Lipshaw. Valdus, Clown, and Third Friar. Read by Nadine Garbure. Cornelius. Read by Rainer. The Pope. Read by John Steigerwald. Emperor. By Sean Randall. Horsecourser. Read for you by Frank Booker. Robin. Read by Jason Mills. Ralph, Second Scholar, and Wrath. Read by Sandra. Second Friar, and Old Man. Read by David Lawrence. Fourth Friar and Duke of Vanholt. Read by Lars Rolander. Duchess of Vanholt. Read by Musical Harp One. Pride. Read by Mary Beth Blackburn. Sloth. Read by Dana Meilinger. Lechery. Read by Lucy Perry. Act One. Scene One. Enter Chorus. Not marching now in fields of Thrasymene, where Mars did mate the Carthaginians, nor sporting in the dalliance of love, in courts of kings where state is overturned, nor in the pomp of proud audacious deeds intends our muse to vaunt her heavenly verse. Only this, gentlemen, we must perform the form of faustus fortunes good or bad to patient judgments we appeal our plaud and speak for faustus in his infancy now is he born his parents base of stock in germany within a town called rhodes of riper years to Württemberg he went, whereas his kinsmen chiefly brought him up. So soon he profits in divinity, the fruitful plot of scholarism graced, that shortly he was graced with doctor's name, excelling all whose sweet delight disputes in heavenly matters of theology till swollen with cunning of a self-conceit his waxen wings did mount above his reach and melting heavens conspired his overthrow for falling to a devilish exercise and glutted now with learning's golden gifts he surfeits upon cursed necromancy nothing so sweet as magic is to him which he prefers before his chiefest bliss and this the man that in his study sits exit scene two faustus discovered in his study settle thy studies faustus and begin to sound the depth of that thou wilt profess Having commenced, be a divine in show, yet level at the end of every art, and live and die in Aristotle's works. Sweet analytics, tis thou hast ravished me. Bene disserere est finis logices. Is, to dispute well, logic's chiefest end? Affords this art no greater miracle? Then read no more thou hast attained that end a greater subject fitteth faustus wit bid economy farewell and galen come seeing ubi desinit philosophus ibi incipit medicus be a physician faustus heap up gold 
and be eternized for some wondrous cure summum bonum medicinae sanitas the end of physic is our body's health why faustus hast thou not attained that end is not thy common talk found aphorisms are not thy bills hung up as monuments whereby whole cities have escaped the plague and thousand desperate maladies been eased yet art thou still but faustus and a man couldst thou make men to live eternally or being dead raise them to life again then this profession were to be esteemed physic farewell where is justinian reads si una eademque res legatur duobus alterem alte valorum rei etc a pretty case of paltry legacies reads exo hereditare filium non potest pater nisi etc such is the subject of the institute and universal body of the law this study fits a mercenary drudge who aims at nothing but external trash too servile and illiberal for me when all is done divinity is best jerome's bible faustus view it well reads stipendium peccati mors est ha stipendium etc the reward of sin is death that's hard reads si percasse negamus falimor et nulla est in nobis veritas if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and there's no truth in us why then belike we must sin and so consequently die ay we must die an everlasting death what doctrine call you this que sera sera what will be shall be divinity adieu these metaphysics of magicians and necromantic books are heavenly lines circles scenes letters and characters ay these are those that faustus most desires oh what a world of profit and delight of power of honour of omnipotence is promised to the studious artisan all things that move between the quiet poles shall be at my command emperors and kings are but obeyed in their several provinces nor can they raise the wind or rend the clouds but his dominion that exceeds in this stretcheth as far as doth the mind of man a sound magician is a mighty god here faustus tie thy brains to gain a deity enter wagner wagner commend me to my dearest friends the german valdus and cornelius request them earnestly to visit me i will sir exit their conference will be a greater help to me than all my labours plod i ne'er so fast enter good angel and evil angel oh faustus lay that damned book aside and gaze not on it lest it tempt thy soul and heap god's heavy wrath upon thy head read read the scriptures that is blasphemy go forward faustus in that famous art wherein all nature's treasure is contained be thou on earth as jove is in the sky lord and commander of these elements exeunt angels how am i glutted with conceit of this shall i make spirits fetch me what i please resolve me of all ambiguities before what desperate enterprise i will i'll have them fly to india for gold ransack the ocean for orient pearl and search all corners of the new-found world for pleasant fruits and princely delicates i'll have them read me strange philosophy and tell the secrets of all foreign kings i'll have them wall all germany with brass and make swift rhine circle fair wertenberg 
I'll have them fill the public schools with silk, wherewith the students shall be bravely clad. I'll levy soldiers with the coin they bring, and chase the Prince of Parma from our land, and reign sole king of all the provinces, yea, stranger engines for the brunt of war than was the fiery keel at Antwerp's bridge. I'll make my servile spirits to invent. Enter Valdus and Cornelius. Come, German Valdus and Cornelius, and make me blessed with your sage conference. Valdus, sweet Valdus, and Cornelius, know that your words have won me at the last to practice magic and concealed arts. Yet not your words only, but mine own fantasy that will receive no object for my head but ruminates on necromantic skill. Philosophy is odious and obscure. Both law and physic are for petty wits. Divinity is the basest of the three, unpleasant, harsh, contemptible, and vile. Tis magic, magic that hath ravished me. Then, gentle friends, aid me in this attempt, and I, that have with concise syllogisms gravelled the pastors of the German church, and made the flowering pride of Wertenberg sworn to my problems, as the infernal spirits on sweet Musaeus when he came to hell, will be as cunning as Agrippa was, whose shadow made all Europe honour him. Faustus, these books, thy wit, and our experience shall make all nations to canonise us. As Indian Moors obey their Spanish lords, so shall the spirits of every element be always serviceable to us three. Like lions shall they guard us when we please. Like all men rutters with their horsemen's staves, or Lapland giants, trotting by our sides. Sometimes like women, or unwedded maids, shadowing more beauty in their airy brows than have the white breasts of the Queen of Love. From Venice shall they drag huge argosies, and from America the golden fleece that yearly stuffs old Philip's treasury. If learned Faustus will be resolute. Valdus, as resolute am I in this as thou to live. Therefore, object it not. The miracles that magic will perform will make thee vow to study nothing else. He that is grounded in astrology, enriched with tongues, well seen in minerals, has all the principles magic does require then doubt not faustus but to be renowned and more frequented for this mystery than heretofore the delphian oracle the spirits tell me they can dry the sea and fetch the treasures of all foreign wrecks ay all the wells that our forefathers hid within the massy entrails of the earth then tell me faustus what shall we three want nothing cornelius oh this cheers my soul come show me some demonstrations magical that i may conjure in some lusty grove and have these joys in full possession then haste thee to some solitary grove and bear wise bacon's and albertus works the hebrew psalter and new testament and whatsoever else is requisite who will inform the ear our conference sees by this first let him know the words of art and then all other ceremonies learned faustus may try his cunning by himself first i'll instruct thee in the rudiments and then will thou be perfecter than i then come and dine with me and after meat will canvass every quiddity thereof for ere i sleep i'll try what i can do this night i'll conjure though i die therefore Exeunt. Scene three. Enter two scholars. I wonder what's become of Faustus that was wont to make our schools ring with sick probo. That shall we know, for see, here comes his boy. Enter Wagner. How now, Sirrah? Where's thy master? God in heaven knows. Why? Dost not thou know? Yes, I know, but that follows not. Go to, Sirrah leave your jesting and tell us where he is that follows not necessary by force of argument 
that you, being licentiates, should stand upon. Therefore acknowledge your error and be attentive. Why didst thou say thou knewest? Have you any witness, aunt? Yes, sirrah, I heard you. Ask my fellow if I be a thief. Well, you will not tell us. Yes, sir, I will tell you. Yet if you were not dunces, you would never ask me such a question. For is not he corpus naturale? And is not that mobile? Then wherefore should you ask me such a question? But that I am by nature phlegmatic, slow to wrath, and prone to lechery? To love, I would say. It were not for you to come within forty foot of the place of execution, although I do not doubt to see you both hanged the next sessions. Thus, having triumphed over you, I will set my countenance like a Precisian, and begin to speak thus. Truly, my dear brethren, my master is within a dinner with Valdes and Cornelius, as this wine, if it could speak, would inform your worships. And so the Lord bless you, preserve you, and keep you, my dear brethren, my dear brethren. Exit. Nay, then, I fear he is fallen into that damned art for which they two are infamous through the world. Were he a stranger and not allied to me, yet should I grieve for him. But come, let us go and inform the rector, and see if he by his grave counsel can reclaim him. Oh, but I fear me nothing can reclaim him. Yet let us try what we can do. Exeunt. End of Act One. Act Two of Dr. Faustus. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Tragical History of Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe. From the Quarto of 1604. Act Two. Scene One. Enter Faustus to conjure. Now that the gloomy shadow of the earth, longing to view Orion's drizzling look, leaps from the Antarctic world unto the sky, and dims the welkin with her pitchy breath. Faustus, begin thine incantations, and try if devils will obey thy hest, seeing thou hast prayed and sacrificed to them. Within this circle is Jehovah's name, forward and backward anagrammatized, the abbreviated names of holy saints, figures of every adjunct to the heavens, and characters of signs and erring stars, by which the spirits are enforced to rise. Then fear not, Faustus, but be resolute, and try the utmost magic can perform. Saint mihi de acarontis propitii, Valet numen triplex Jehovei, Inyei, Eri, Aquitani Spiritus, Salvete, Orientis Princeps, Beelzebub, Inferni Ardentis Monarca, Et Demagorgon, Propitiamus Vos, Ut Apareat, Et Surgat Mephistophilis, Quod Tumeraris, Per Jehovam, Gehenam, et consecratam aquam quam nunc spargo, signumque crucis quod nunc faccio, et per vota nostra, ipse nunc surgat nobis dicatus, Mephistophilis. Enter Mephistophilis. I charge thee to return and change thy shape. Thou art too ugly to attend on me. Go and return an old Franciscan friar. That holy shape becomes a devil best. Exit Mephistophilis. I see this virtue in my heavenly words. Who would not be proficient in this art? How pliant is this Mephistophilis, full of obedience and humility. Such is the force of magic and my spells. No, Faustus, thou art conjurer laureate. Thou canst command great Mephistophilis, Quin regis Mephistophilis fratris imagine. Re-enter Mephistophilis like a Franciscan friar. Now, Faustus, what wouldst thou have me do? I charge thee, wait upon me whilst I live, to do whatever Faustus shall command, be it to make the moon drop from her sphere, 
or the ocean to overwhelm the world. I am a servant to great Lucifer, and may not follow thee without his leave. No more than he commands must we perform. Did not he charge thee to appear to me? No. I came hither of mine own accord. Did not my conjuring speeches raise thee? Speak. That was the cause, but yet per accidens. For when we hear one rack the name of God, abjure the scriptures and his Saviour Christ, we fly in hope to get his glorious soul. Nor will we come unless he use such means whereby he is in danger to be damned. Therefore the shortest cut for conjuring is stoutly to abjure the Trinity, and pray devoutly to the Prince of Hell. So Faustus hath already done, and holds this principle, there is no chief but only Beelzebub, to whom Faustus doth dedicate himself. This word damnation terrifies not him, for he confounds hell in Elysium, his ghost be with the old philosophers. But, leaving these vain trifles of men's souls, tell me, what is that Lucifer thy lord? Arch-regent and commander of all spirits. Was not that Lucifer an angel once? Yes, Faustus, and most dearly loved of God. How comes it, then, that he is prince of devils? Oh, by aspiring pride and insolence, for which God threw him from the face of heaven. And what are you that live with Lucifer? Unhappy spirits that fell with Lucifer, conspired against our God with Lucifer, and are for ever damned with Lucifer. Where are you damned? In hell. How comes it, then, that thou art out of hell? Why, this is hell. Nor am I out of it. Think'st thou that I, who saw the face of God, and tasted the eternal joys of heaven, am not tormented with ten thousand hells, in being deprived of everlasting bliss? O oh, Faustus, leave these frivolous demands which strike a terror to my fainting soul. What? Is great Mephistopheles so passionate for being deprived of the joys of heaven? Learn thou, Faustus, manly fortitude and scorn those joys thou shalt never possess. Go, bear these tidings to great Lucifer. Seeing Faustus hath incurred eternal death by desperate thoughts against Jove's deity, say, he surrenders up to him his soul, so he will spare him four and twenty years, letting him live in all voluptuousness, having thee ever to attend on me, to give me whatsoever I shall ask to tell me whatsoever I demand, to slay mine enemies, and aid my friends, and always be obedient to my will. Go and return to mighty Lucifer, and meet me in my study at midnight, and then resolve me of thy master's mind. I will, Faustus. Exit. Had I as many souls as there be stars, I'd give them all for Mephistopheles. By him I'll be great emperor of the world, and make a bridge thorough the moving air, to pass the ocean with a band of men. I'll join the hills that bind the Afric shore, and make that country continent to Spain, and both contributory to my crown. The emperor shall not live but by my leave, nor any potentate of Germany. Now that I have obtained what I desired, I'll live in speculation of this art, till Mephistopheles return again. Exit. Scene two. Enter Wagner and Clown. Sirrah boy, come hither. How boy? Swans boy. I hope you have seen many boys with such picadevans as I have. Boy, quotha. Tell me, Sirrah, hast thou any comings in? Aye, and goings out too. You may see else. Alas, poor slave. See how poverty jesteth in his nakedness. The villain is bare and out of service, and so hungry, that I know he would give his soul to the devil for a shoulder of mutton, though it were blood raw. How? My soul to the devil for a shoulder of mutton, though it were blood raw. Not so, good friend. By a lady, I had need have it well roasted, and good sauce to it, if I pay so dear. Well, wilt thou serve me, and I'll make thee go like qui mihi discipulus? How, in verse? 
No, sirrah, in beaten silk and staves acre. How, how? Neighbor's acre? I, I thought that was all the land his father left him. Do you hear? I would be sorry to rob you of your living. Sirrah, I say, in staves acre. Oho, oho, staves acre. Why, then, belike, if I were your man, I should be full of vermin. So thou shalt, whether thou beest with me or no. But, sirrah, leave your jesting, and bind yourself presently unto me for seven years, or I'll turn all the lice about thee into familiars, and they shall tear thee in pieces. Do ye hear, sir? You may save that labour. They are too familiar with me already. Swans, they are as bold with my flesh as if they had paid for their meat and drink. Well, do you hear, sirrah? Hold, take these gilders. Gives money. Gritterans, what be they? Why, French crowns. Mass, but for the name of French crowns, a man were as good have as many English counters. And what should I do with these? Why now, sirrah, thou art at an hour's warning, whensoever or wheresoever the devil shall fetch thee. No, no, here, take your gritterans again. Truly, I'll none of them. Truly, but you shall. Bear witness I gave them him. Bear witness I give them you again. Well, I will cause two devils presently to fetch thee away. Balliol and Belcher. Let your Balliol and your Belcher come here, and I'll knock them. They were never so knocked since they were devils. Say I should kill one of them. What would folks say? Do you see yonder tall fellow in the round slab? He has killed the devil. So I should be called kill devil all the parish over. Enter two devils, and the clown runs up and down, crying. Ah! Balliol and Belcher, spirits, away. Exeunt devils. What, are they gone? A vengeance on them. They have vile long nails. There was a he-devil and a she-devil. I'll tell you how you shall know them. All he devils has horns, and all she devils has clifts and cloven feet. Well, sirrah, follow me. But do you hear? If I should serve you, would you teach me to raise up banyos and belchios? I will teach thee to turn thyself to anything, to a dog or a cat or a mouse or a rat or anything. How? A Christian fellow to a dog or a cat, a mouse or a rat? No, no, sir. If you turn me into anything, let it be in the likeness of a little pretty frisking flea, that I may be here and there and everywhere, or oh, I'll tickle the pretty wenches' blackets. I'll be amongst them, I faith. Well, sirrah, come. But do you hear, Wagner? How? Balliol and Belcher. Oh, Lord, I pray, sir, let Banyo and Belcher go sleep. Villain, call me Master Wagner and let thy left eye be diametrally fixed upon my right heel, with quasi-vestigious nostris in sistere. Exit. God forgive me, he speaks Dutch fustian. Well, I'll follow him. I'll serve him, that's flat. Exit. Scene three. Faustus discovered in his study. Now, Faustus, must thou needs be damned, and canst thou not be saved? What boots it, then, to think of God or heaven? Away with such vain fancies and despair. Despair in God and trust in Beelzebub. Now go not backward, no, Faustus, be resolute. Why waverest thou? Oh, something soundeth in mine ears. Abjure this magic, turn to God again. Aye, and Faustus will turn to God again. To God? He loves thee not. The God thou servest is thine own appetite, wherein is fixed the love of Beelzebub. To him I'll build an altar and a church, and offer lukewarm blood of new-born babes. Enter good angel and evil angel. Sweet Faustus, leave that execrable art. Contrition, prayer, repentance, what of them? Oh, they are means to bring thee unto heaven. <laughs> Rather illusions, fruits of lunacy, that make men foolish, that do trust them most. Sweet Faustus, think of heaven and heavenly things. No, Faustus, think of honour and of wealth. Exeunt angels. Of wealth? Why, 
the signory of Emden shall be mine, when Mephistophilus shall stand by me. What god can hurt thee, Faustus? Thou art safe. Cast no more doubts. Come, Mephistophilus, and bring glad tidings from great Lucifer. Is not midnight? Come, Mephistophilus. Veni, veni, Mephistophile. Enter Mephistophilus. Now tell me, what says Lucifer, thy lord? That I shall wait on Faustus while he lives, so he will buy my service with his soul. Already Faustus hath hazarded that for thee. But, Faustus, thou must bequeath it solemnly, and write a deed of gift with thine own blood, for that security craves great Lucifer. If thou deny it, I will back to hell. Stay, Mephistophilus, and tell me, what good will my soul do thy lord? Enlarge his kingdom. Is that the reason why he tempts us thus? Solamen miseris socios habuise dolores. Why? Have you any pain that torture others? As great as have the human souls of men. But tell me, Faustus, shall I have thy soul? And I will be thy slave, and wait on thee, and give thee more than thou hast wit to ask. I, Mephistophilus, I give it thee. Then, Faustus, stab thine arm courageously, and bind thy soul that at some certain day great Lucifer may claim it as his own, and then be thou as great as Lucifer. Stabbing his arm. Lo, Mephistophilus, for love of thee I cut mine arm, and with my proper blood assure my soul to be great Lucifer's chief lord and regent of perpetual night. View here the blood that trickles from mine arm, and let it be propitious for my wish. But, Faustus, thou must write it in manner of a deed of gift. And so I will. Writes. But, Mephistophilus, my blood congeals, and I can write no more. I'll fetch thee fire to dissolve it straight. Exit. What might the stay by blood portend? Is it unwilling I should write this bill? Why streams it not, that I may write afresh? Faustus gives thee his soul. Ah! There it stayed. Why shouldst thou not? Is not thy soul thine own? Then write again. Faustus gives thee his soul. Re-enter Mephistophilus with a chafer of coals. Here's fire. Come, Faustus, set it on. So, now the blood begins to clear again. Now will I make an end immediately. Writes. Aside. Oh, what will not I do to obtain his soul? Consummatum est. This bill is ended. And Faustus hath bequeathed his soul to Lucifer. But what is his inscription on mine arm? Homo fuge. Whither should I fly? If unto God, he'll throw me down to hell. My senses are deceived. Here's nothing writ. I see it plain. Here in this place is writ, Homo Fuji. Yet shall not Faustus fly. Aside, and then exit. I'll fetch him somewhat to delight his mind. Re-enter Mephistophilus with devils, who give crowns and rich apparel to Faustus, dance, and then depart. Speak, Mephistophilus. What means this show? Nothing, Faustus, but to delight thy mind withal, and to show thee what magic can perform. But may I raise up spirits when I please? Ay, Faustus, and do greater things than these. Then there's enough for a thousand souls. Here, Mephistophilus, receive this scroll, a deed of gift of body and of soul, but yet conditionally that thou perform all articles prescribed between us both. Faustus, I swear by hell and Lucifer to effect all promises between us made. Then hear me read them. Reads. On these conditions following. First, that Faustus may be a spirit in form and substance. Secondly, that Mephistophilus shall be his servant and at his command. Thirdly, that Mephistophilus shall do for him and bring him whatsoever he desires. Fourthly, that he shall be in his chamber or house invisible. Lastly, 
that he shall appear to the said John Faustus at all times in what form or shape soever he please. I, John Faustus, of Wertenberg, doctor, by these presents, do give both body and soul to Lucifer, Prince of the East, and his minister Mephistophilus, and furthermore grant unto them that, twenty-four years being expired, the articles above written inviolate full power to fetch or carry the said John Faustus, body and soul, flesh, blood or goods, into their habitation wheresoever, by me, John Faustus. Speak, Faustus. Do you deliver this as your deed? I take it, and the devil give thee good aunt. Now, Faustus, ask what thou wilt. First will I question thee about hell. Tell me, where is the place that men call hell? Under the heavens. Ay, but where about? Within the bowels of these elements, where we are tortured and remain for ever. Hell hath no limits, nor is circumscribed in one self-place. For where we are is hell, and where hell is there must we ever be. And to conclude, when all the world dissolves, and every creature shall be purified, all places shall be hell that are not heaven. Come, I think hell's a fable. I think so still, till experience change thy mind. Why? Think'st thou, then, that Faustus shall be damned? Ay, of necessity, for here's the scroll wherein thou hast given thy soul to Lucifer. Ay, and body too. But what of that? Think'st thou that Faustus is so fond to imagine that, after this life, there is any pain? Tush, these are trifles and mere old wives' tales. But, Faustus, I am an instance to prove the contrary, for I am damned, and am now in hell. How? Now in hell? Nay, and this be hell, I'll willingly be damned here. What? Walking, disputing, etc.? But, leaving off this, let me have a wife, the fairest maid in Germany, for I am wanton and lascivious, and cannot live without a wife. How? A wife? I prithee, Faustus, talk not of a wife. Nay, sweet Mephistophilus, fetch me one, for I will have one. Well, thou wilt have one. Sit there till I come, I'll fetch thee a wife in the devil's name. Exit. Re-enter Mephistophilus with a devil dressed like a woman, with fireworks. Tell me, Faustus, how dost thou like thy wife? A plague on her for a hot whore. Tut, Faustus, marriage is but a ceremonial toy. If thou lovest me, think no more of it. I'll cull thee out the fairest courtesans, and bring them every morning to thy bed. She whom thine eye shall like, thy heart shall have, be she as chaste as was Penelope, as wise as Saba, or as beautiful as was bright Lucifer before his fall. Hold. Take this book, peruse it thoroughly. Gives book. The iterating of these lines brings gold. The framing of this circle on the ground brings whirlwinds, tempests, thunder, and lightning. Pronounce this thrice devoutly to thyself, and men in armour shall appear to thee, ready to execute what thou desirest. Thanks, Mephistophilus. Yet fain would I have a book wherein I might behold all spells and incantations that I might raise up spirits when I please. Here they are, in this book. Turns to them. Now would I have a book, where I might see all characters and planets of the heavens, that I might know their motions and dispositions. Here they are, too. Turns to them. Nay, let me have one book more, and then I have done, wherein I might see all plants, herbs, and trees that grow upon the earth. Here they be. Oh, thou art deceived. Tut, I warrant thee. Turns to them. When I behold the heavens, then I repent and curse thee, wicked Mephistophilus, because thou hast deprived me of those joys. Why, Faustus, thinkest thou heaven is such a glorious thing? I tell thee, tis not half so fair as thou, or any man that breathes on earth. 
How provest thou that? T'was made for man. Therefore is man more excellent. If it were made for man, t'was made for me. I will renounce this magic and repent. Enter good angel and evil angel. Faustus, repent, yet God will pity thee. Thou art a spirit. <laughs> God cannot pity thee. Who buzzeth in mine ears, I am a spirit. Be I a devil, yet God may pity me. Ay, God will pity me if I repent. Ay, <laughs> but Faustus never shall repent. Exeunt angels. My heart so hardened, I cannot repent. Scarce can I name salvation, faith, or heaven, But fearful echoes thunder in mine ears, Faustus, thou art damned. Then swords and knives, poison, guns, halters, And envenomed steel are laid before me to dispatch myself. And long ere this I should have slain myself, Had not sweet pleasure conquered deep despair. Have I not made blind Homer sing to me Of Alexander's love and Unan's death? And hath not he that built the walls of Thebes With ravishing sound of his melodious harp Made music with my Mephistopheles? Why should I die then, or basely despair? I am resolved, Faustus shall ne'er repent. Come, Mephistopheles, let us dispute again And argue of divine astrology. Tell me, are there many heavens above the moon? Are all celestial bodies but one globe, as is the substance of this centric earth? As are the elements, such are the spheres, mutually folded in each other's orb. And, Faustus, all jointly move upon one axle-tree, whose terminin is termed the world's wide pole. Nor are the names of Saturn, Mars, or Jupiter fiend, but are erring stars. But tell me, have they all one motion, both situ et tempore? All jointly move from east to west in twenty-four hours upon the poles of the world, but differ in their motion upon the poles of the zodiac. Tush! These slender trifles Wagner can decide. Hath Mephistopheles no greater skill? Who knows not the double motion of the planets? The first is finished in a natural day, the second thus as Saturn in thirty years, Jupiter in twelve, Mars in four, the Sun, Venus, Mercury in a year, the Moon in twenty-eight days. Tush, these are freshmen's suppositions. But, tell me, hath every sphere a dominion or intelligentsia? Aye. How many heavens or spheres are there? Nine. The seven planets, the firmament, and the imperial heaven. Well, Resolve me in this question. Why have we not conjunctions, oppositions, aspects, eclipses, all at one time? But in some years we have more, in some less. Per inoqualem mutum respectu totius. Well, I am answered. Tell me, who made the world? I will not. Sweet Mephistopheles, tell me. Move me not, for I will not tell thee. Villain, have I not bound thee to tell me anything? Ay, that is not against our kingdom, but this is. Think thou on hell, Faustus, for thou art damned. Think, Faustus, upon God that made the world. Remember this. Exit. I go, accursed spirit, to ugly hell. Tis thou hast damned distressed Faustus' soul. Is not too late? Re-enter good angel and evil angel. <laughs> too late. Never too late, if Faustus can repent. If thou repent, devils shall tear thee in pieces. Repent, and they shall never raise thy skin. Exeunt angels. Ah, Christ, my Saviour, seek to save distressed Faustus' soul. Enter Lucifer, Beelzebub, and Mephistopheles. Christ cannot save thy soul, for he is just. There is none but I have interest in the same. Oh, who art thou that looks so terrible? I am Lucifer, and this is my companion prince in hell. O oh, Faustus, 
they are come to fetch away thy soul we come to tell thee thou dost injure us thou talkest of christ contrary to thy promise thou shouldst not think of god think of the devil and of his dam too nor will i henceforth pardon me in this and faustus vows never to look to heaven never to name god or pray to him to burn his scriptures slay his ministers and make my spirits pull his churches down do so and we will highly gratify thee faustus we are come from hell to shew thee some pastime sit down and thou shalt see all the seven deadly sins appear in their proper shapes that sight will be as pleasing unto me as paradise was to adam the first day of his creation talk not of paradise nor creation but mark this show talk of the devil and nothing else come away enter the seven deadly sins now faustus examine them of their several names and dispositions what art thou the first i am pride i disdain to have any parents i am like to ovid's flea i can creep into every corner of a wench sometimes like a periwig i sit upon her brow or like a fan of feathers i kiss her lips indeed i do what do i not but fie what a scent is here i'll not speak another word except the ground were perfumed and covered with cloth of arras what art thou the second i am covetousness begotten of an old show in an old leathern bag and might i have my wish i would desire that this house and all the people in it were turned to gold that i might lock you up in my good chest o oh, my sweet gold what art thou the third i am wrath i had neither father nor mother i leapt out of a lion's mouth when i was scarce half an hour old and ever since i have run up and down the world with this case of rapiers wounding myself when i had nobody to fight withal i was born in hell and look to it for some of you shall be my father what art thou the fourth i am envy begotten of a chimney sweeper and an oyster wife i cannot read and therefore wish all books were burnt i am lean with seeing others eat oh that there would come a famine through all the world that all might die and i live alone then thou should see how fat i would be but must thou sit and i stand come down with a vengeance away envious rascal what art thou the fifth oh, ah sir ah i'm gluttony my parents are all dead and the devil a penny they have left me but a bare pension and that is thirty meals a day and ten bavers a small trifle to suffice nature oh i come from a royal parentage my grandfather was a gammon of bacon my grandmother a hogshead of claret wine my godfathers were these peter pickle herring and martin maddlemas beef oh but my godmother she was a jolly gentle woman and well beloved in every good town and city her name was mistress marjorie march beer no faustus thou hast heard all my progeny wilt thou bid me to supper no i'll see thee hanged thou wilt eat up all my victuals then the devil choke thee choke thyself glutton what art thou the sixth i am sloth I was begotten on a sunny bank where I have lain ever since, and you have done me great injury to bring me from thence. Let me be carried thither again by gluttony and lechery. I'll not speak another word for a king's ransom. 
what are you mistress minx the seventh and last who i sir i am the one that loves an inch of raw mutton better than an ell of fried stockfish and the first letter of my name begins with l away to hell to hell exeunt the sins now faustus how dost thou like this oh this feeds my soul tut faustus in hell is all manner of delight oh might i see hell and return again how happy were i then thou shalt and i will send for thee at midnight in meantime take this book peruse it thoroughly and thou shalt turn thyself into what shape thou wilt great thanks mighty lucifer this will i keep as cherry as my life farewell faustus and think on the devil farewell great lucifer exeunt lucifer and beelzebub come mephistophilus exeunt end of act two Act Three of Doctor Faustus. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Tragical History of Doctor Faustus by Christopher Marlowe, from the Quarto of 1604. Act Three, Scene One. Enter Chorus. Learned Faustus, to know the secrets of astronomy, graven in the book of Jove's high firmament, did mount himself to scale Olympus' top, being seated in a chariot burning bright, drawn by the strength of yoky dragons' necks. He now is gone to prove cosmography, and as i guess will first arrive at rome to see the pope and manner of his court and take some part of holy peter's feast that to this day is highly solemnized exit scene two enter faustus and mephistophilus having now my good mephistophilus passed with delight the stately town of trier environed round with airy mountain tops with walls of flint and deep entrenched lakes not to be won by any conquering prince from paris next coasting the realm of france we saw the river main fall into rhine whose banks are set with groves of fruitful vines then up to naples rich campagna whose buildings fair and gorgeous to the eye the streets straight forth and paved with finest brick quarter the town in four equivalents there saw we learned maro's golden tomb the way he cut an english mile in length thorough a rock of stone in one night's space from thence to venice padua and the rest in one of which a sumptuous temple stands that threats the stars with her aspiring top thus hitherto hath faustus spent his time but tell me now what resting place is this hast thou as erst i did command conducted me within the walls of rome faustus i have and because we will not be unprovided i have taken up his holiness privy chamber for our use i hope his holiness will bid us welcome tut tis no matter man we'll be bold with his good cheer and now my faustus that thou mayst perceive what rome containeth to delight thee with know that this city stands upon seven hills that underprop the groundwork of the same just through the midst runs flowing tiber's stream with winding banks that cut it in two parts over the which four stately bridges lean that make safe passage to each part of rome upon the bridge called ponte angelo erected is a castle passing strong 
within whose walls such store of ordnance are, and double cannons framed of carved brass, as match the days within one complete year, besides the gates and high pyramids which Julius Caesar brought from Africa. Now, by the kingdoms of infernal rule, of Styx, of Acheron, and the fiery lake of ever-burning Phlegathon, I swear that I do long to see the monuments and situation of bright, splendid Rome. Come, therefore, let's away. Nay, Faustus, stay. I know you'd fain see the Pope, and take some part of holy Peter's feast, where thou shalt see a troop of bald pate friars, whose summum bonum is in belly cheer. Well, I'm content to compass then some sport, and by their folly make us merriment. Then charm me, that I may be invisible, to do what I please, unseen of any whilst I stay in Rome. Mephistophilus charms him. So, Faustus, now do what thou wilt, thou shalt not be discerned. Sound a sonnet. Enter the Pope and the Cardinal of Lorraine to the banquet, with friars attending. My lord of Lorraine, will it please you draw near? Fall to, and the devil choke you, and you spare. How now? Who's that which spake? Friars, look about. Here's nobody, if it like your holiness. My lord, here is a dainty dish was sent me from the bishop of Milan. I thank you, sir. Snatches the dish. How now? Who's that which snatched the meat from me? Will no man look? My lord, this dish was sent me from the cardinal of Florence. You say true. I'll have it. Snatches the dish. What? Again? My lord, I'll drink to your grace. I'll pledge your grace. Snatches the cup. My lord, it may be some ghost, newly crept out of purgatory, come to beg a pardon of your holiness. It may be so. Friars, prepare a dirge to lay the fury of this ghost. Once again, my lord, fall to. The Pope crosses himself. What? Are you crossing of yourself? Well, use that trick no more, I would advise you. The Pope crosses himself again. Well, there's the second time. Aware the third. I give you fair warning. The Pope crosses himself again, and Faustus hits him a box of the ear, and they all run away. Come on, Mephistophilus, what shall we do? Nay, I know not, we shall be cursed with bell, book, and candle. How? Bell, book, and candle, candle, book, and bell, forward and backward to curse Faustus to hell. Anon you shall hear a hog grunt, a calf bleat, and an ass bray, because it is St. Peter's holiday. Re-enter all the friars to sing the dirge. Come, brethren, let's about our business with good devotion. Cursed be that stole away his holiness me from the table. Maledica Dominus. Cursed be that struck his holiness a blow on the face. Maledica Dominus. Cursed be that took Christ and the low blow on the gate, Maledica Dominus. Cursed be he that disturbed with our holy dirge, Maledica Dominus. Cursed be he that took away his holiness wine, Maledica Dominus. Et omnes ye. Amen. Mephistophilus and Faustus beat the friars and fling fireworks among them, and so exeunt. Scene three. Enter chorus. When Faustus had with pleasure ta'en the view of rarest things and royal courts of kings, he stayed his course and so returned home where such as bear his absence but with grief i mean his friends and nearest companions did gratulate his safety with kind words and in their conference of what befell touching his journey through the world and air 
they put forth questions of astrology which faustus answered with such learned skill as they admired and wondered at his wit now is his fame spread forth in every land amongst the rest the emperor is one carolus the fifth at whose palace now faustus is feasted amongst his noblemen what there he did in trial of his art i leave untold your eyes shall see it performed exit scene four enter robin the ostler with a book in his hand all oh, this is admirable here i have stolen one of dr faustus conjuring books and i faith i mean to search some circles for my own use now will i make all the maidens in our parish dance at my pleasure stark naked before me and so by that means i shall see more than e'er i felt or saw yet enter ralph calling robin robin prithee come away there's a gentleman tarries to have his horse and he would have his things rubbed and made clean he keeps such a chaffing with my mistress about it and she has sent me to look thee out prithee come away keep out keep out or else you are blown up you are dismembered ralph keep out for i am about a roaring piece of work come what dost thou do with that same book thou canst not read yes my master and mistress shall find that i can read he for his forehead she for her private study she's born to bear with me or else my heart fails why robin what book is that what book why the most intolerable book for conjuring that e'er was invented by any brimstone devil canst thou conjure with it i can do all these things easily with it first i can make thee drunk with epicras at any tavern in europe for nothing that's one of my conjuring works our master parson says that's nothing true ralph and more ralph if thou hast any mind to nan spit our kitchen maid then turn her and wind her to thine own use as often as thou wilt and at midnight oh brave robin shall i have nan spit to mine own use on that condition i'll feed thy devil with horse-bread as long as he lives a free cost no more sweet ralph let's go and make clean our boots which lie foul upon our hands and then to our conjuring in the devil's name exeunt enter robin and ralph with a silver goblet come ralph did i not tell thee we were for ever made by this dr faustus book ecce signum here's a simple purchase for horse-keepers our horses shall eat no hay as long as this lasts but robin here comes the vintner hush i'll gull him supernaturally enter vintner drawer i hope all is paid god be with you come ralph soft sir a word with you i must yet have a goblet paid from you ere you go i a goblet ralph i a goblet i scorn you and you are but a <coughs> i a goblet search me i mean so sir with your favour searches robin how say you now i must say somewhat to your fellow you sir me sir me sir search your fill ventner searches him now sir you may be ashamed to burden honest men with a matter of truth well one of you hath this goblet about you you lie drawer tis afore me sirrah you i'll teach you to impeach honest men stand by i'll scour you for a goblet stand aside you had best i charge you in the name of belzebub look to the goblet ralph what mean you sir i'll tell you what i mean reads from a book sanctor bulorum periphrasticon nay i'll tickle you vintner look to the goblet ralph polypragmos belziborums framanto pacostifos tosfu mephistophilis enter mephistophilis sets squibs at their backs and then exit they run about oh nomine domini what meanest thou robin thou hast no goblet peccatum peccatorum here's thy goblet good vintner gives the goblet to vintner who exits 
misericordia pro nobis what shall i do a good devil forgive me now and i'll never rob thy library more re-enter mephistophilis monarch of hell under whose black survey great potentates do kneel with awful fear upon whose altars thousand souls do lie how am i vexed with these villains charms from constantinople am i hither come only for pleasure of these damned slaves how from constantinople you have had a great journey will you take sixpence in your purse to pay for your supper and be gone well villains for your presumption i transform thee into an ape and thee into a dog and so be gone exit oh into an ape that's brave i'll have fine sport with the boys i'll get nuts and apples enow i must be a dog if earth thy head will never be out of the pottage pot exeunt scene five enter emperor faustus and knight with attendants master dr faustus i have heard strange report of thy knowledge in the black art how that none in my empire or in the whole world can compare with thee for the rare effects of magic they say thou hast a familiar spirit by whom thou canst accomplish what thy list this therefore is my request that thou let me see some proof of thy skill that mine eyes may be witnesses to confirm what mine ears have heard reported and here i swear to thee by the honour of mine imperial crown that whatever thou doest thou shalt be no ways prejudiced or endamaged aside the faith he looks much like a conjurer my gracious sovereign though i must confess myself far inferior to the report men have published and nothing answerable to the honour of your imperial majesty yet for that love and duty binds me thereunto i am content to do whatsoever your majesty shall command me then dr faustus mark what i shall say as i was sometime solitary set within my closet sundry thoughts arose about the honour of mine ancestors how they had won by prowess such exploits got such riches subdued so many kingdoms as we that do succeed or they that shall hereafter possess our throne shall i fear me near attain to that degree of high renown and great authority amongst which kings is alexander the great chief spectacle of the world's preeminence the bright shining of whose glorious acts lightens the world with his reflecting beams as when i hear but motion made of him it grieves my soul i never saw the man if therefore thou by cunning of thine art canst raise this man from hollow vaults below where lies entombed this famous conqueror and bring with him his beauteous paramour both in their right shapes gesture and attire they used to wear during their time of life thou shalt both satisfy my just desire and give me cause to praise thee whilst i live my gracious lord i am ready to accomplish your request so far forth as by art and power of my spirit i am able to perform aside if faith that's just nothing at all but if it like your grace it is not in my ability to present before your eyes the true substantial bodies of those two deceased princes which long since are consumed to dust aside i marry master doctor now there's a sign of grace in you when you will confess the truth but such spirits as can lively resemble alexander and his paramour shall appear before your grace in that manner that they both lived in in their most flourishing estate which i doubt not shall sufficiently content your imperial majesty go to master doctor let me see them presently do you hear master doctor you bring alexander and his paramour before the emperor how then sir if faith that's as true as diana turned me to a stag no sir but when actaeon died he left the horns for you mephistophilus be gone exit mephistophilus nay an you go to conjuring i'll be gone exit i'll meet with you anon for interrupting me so here they are my gracious lord 
Re-enter Mephistopheles with spirits in the shape of Alexander and his paramour. Master Doctor, I heard this lady, while she lived, had a wart or mole in her neck. How shall I know whether it be so or no? Your Highness may boldly go and see. Sure, these are no spirits, but the true substantial bodies of those two deceased princes. Exeunt spirits. Will it please your Highness now to send for the knight that was so pleasant with me here of late? One of you call him forth. Exit attendant. Re-enter the knight with a pair of horns on his head. How now, sir knight? Why, I thought thou hadst been a bachelor. But now I see thou hast a wife that not only gives thee horns, but makes thee wear them. Feel on thy head. Thou damned wretch and execrable dog, bred in the concave of some monstrous rock, how darest thou thus abuse a gentleman? Villain, I say, undo what thou hast done. Oh, not so fast, sir. There's no haste. But, good, are you remembered how you crossed me in my conference with the Emperor? I think I have met with you for it. Good Master Doctor, at my entreaty release him. He hath done penance sufficient. My gracious Lord, not so much for the injury he offered me here in your presence, as to delight you with some mirth, hath Faustus worthily requited this injurious knight, which, being all I desire, I am content to release him of his horns. And, Sir Knight, hereafter speak well of scholars. Mephistopheles, transform him straight. Mephistopheles removes the horns. Now, my good lord, having done my duty, I humbly take my leave. Farewell, Master Doctor, yet, ere you go, expect from me a bounteous reward. Exeunt Emperor, Knight, and Attendants. End of Act 3、Act、4 of Dr. Faustus. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Tragical History of Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe from the Quarto of 1604. Act 4 Scene one. Now, Mephistopheles, the restless course that time doth run with calm and silent foot, shortening my days and thread of vital life, calls for the payment of my latest years. Therefore, sweet Mephistopheles, let us make haste to Wertenberg. What, will you go on horseback or on foot? Nay, till I'm past this fair and pleasant green. I'll walk on foot. Enter a horse courser. We have been all this day seeking one Master Fustian. Master, where he is, God save you, Master Doctor. What, horse courser? You are well met. Do you hear, sir? I have bought you forty dollars for your horse. I cannot sell him, sir. If thou likest him for fifty, take him. Alas, sir, I have no more. I pray you speak for me. I pray you, let him have him. He is an honest fellow, and he has a great charge, neither wife nor child. Well, come, give me your money. Horse courser gives Faustus the money. My boy will deliver him to you. But I must tell you one thing before you have him. Ride him not into the water at any hand. Why, sir, will he not drink of all waters? Oh, yes. He will drink of all waters, but ride him not into the water. Ride him over hedge, or ditch, or where thou wilt, but not into the water. Well, sir, now am I made a man for ever. I'll not leave my horse for forty. If he had but the quality of hey ding ding hey ding ding, I'd make a brave living on him. He has a buttock as slick as an eel. Aside. Well, God be with you, sir. Your boy will deliver him me, but hark, sir, if my horse be sick or ill at ease, if I bring his water to you, you'll tell me what it is? Away, you villain! What, dost think I am a horse doctor? Exit horse courser. What art thou, Faustus, but a man condemned to die? Thy fatal time doth draw to final end. Despair doth drive distrust into my thoughts. 
confound these passions with a quiet sleep tush christ did call the thief upon the cross then rest thee faustus quiet in conceit sleeps in his chair re-enter horse courser all wet crying <laughs> alas alas dr fustian quarter mas dr lupus was never such a doctor hath given me a purgation has purged me of forty dollars i shall never see them more but yet like an ass I, as i was i would not be ruled by him for he bade me i should write him into no water now i think in my altered had some rare quality that he would not have had me know of like a venturous youth rid him into the deep pond at town's end i was no sooner in the middle of the pond but me horse vanished away and i set upon a bottle of hay never so near drowning in my life but i'll seek out my doctor and have my forty dollars again or i'll make it the dearest horse oh yonder is his snipper snapper you hear hey hey pass where's your master why sir what would you you cannot speak with him but i will speak with him why he's fast asleep come some other time i'll speak with him now or break his glass windows about his ears i tell thee he has not slept this eight nights and he had not slept this eight weeks i'll speak with him see where he is fast asleep ay this is he god save you master doctor master doctor master doctor fustian forty dollars forty dollars for a bottle of hay why thou seest he hears thee not so ho ho so ho ho hollows in his ear no will you not wake i'll make you wake ere i go pulls faustus by the leg and pulls it away uh, alas i am undone what shall i do oh my leg my leg help mephistophilus call the officers my leg my leg come villain to the constable oh lord sir let me go and i'll give you forty dollars more where be they i have none about me but come to my ostry and i'll give them to you be gone quickly horse courser runs away what is he gone farewell he faustus has his leg again and the horse courser i take it a bottle of hay for his labour well this trick shall cost him forty dollars more enter wagner how now wagner what's the news with thee sir the duke of van holt doth earnestly entreat your company the duke of van holt an honourable gentleman to whom i must be no niggard of my cunning come mephistophilus let's away to him exeunt scene two enter the duke of van holt the duchess and faustus believe me master doctor this merriment hath much pleased me my gracious lord i am glad it contents you so well but it may be madam you take no delight in this i have heard that great-bellied women do long for some dainties or other what is it madam tell me and you shall have it thanks good master doctor and for i see your courteous intent to pleasure me i will not hide from you the thing my heart desires and were it now summer as it is january in the dead time of the winter i would desire no better meat than a dish of ripe grapes alas madam that's nothing mephistophilus be gone exit mephistophilus were it a greater thing than this so it would content you you should have it re-enter mephistophilus with grapes here they be madam will please you taste on them believe me master doctor this makes me wonder above the rest that being in the dead time of winter and in the month of january how you should come by these grapes if it like your grace the year is divided into two circles over the whole world that when it is here winter with us in the contrary circle it is summer with them as in india psaba and farther countries in the east and by means of a swift spirit that i have i had them brought hither as you see how do you like them madam be they good believe me master doctor they be the best grapes that e'er i tasted in my life before i am glad they content you so madam 
come madam let us in where you must well reward this learned man for the great kindness he hath shewed to you and so i will my lord and whilst i live rest beholding for this courtesy i humbly thank your grace come master doctor follow us and receive your reward exeunt scene three enter wagner i think my master means to die shortly for he hath given to me all his goods and yet methinks if that death were near he would not banquet and carouse and swill amongst the students as even now he doth who are at supper with such belly cheer as wagner ne'er beheld in all his life see where they come belike the feast is ended exit enter faustus with two or three scholars and mephistophilus master dr faustus since our conference about fair ladies which was the beautifulest in all the world we have determined with ourselves that helen of greece was the admirablest lady that ever lived therefore master doctor if you will do us that favour as to let us see that peerless dame of greece whom all the world admires for majesty we should think ourselves much beholding unto you gentlemen for that i know your friendship is unfeigned and Faustus' custom is not to deny the just requests of those that wish him well. He shall behold that peerless dame of Greece, no other ways for pomp and majesty than when Sir Paris crossed the seas with her and brought the spoils to rich Dardania. Be silent then, for danger is in words. Music sounds, and Helen passeth over the stage. Too simple is my wit to tell her praise, whom all the world admires for majesty. No marvel, though the angry Greeks pursued with ten years' war the rape of such a queen, whose heavenly beauty passeth all compare. Since we have seen the pride of nature's works, and only paragon of excellence, let us depart and for this glorious deed happy and blessed be faustus evermore gentlemen farewell the same i wish to you exeunt scholars enter an old man ah dr faustus that i might prevail to guide thy steps unto the way of life by which sweet path thou mayest attain the goal that shall conduct thee to celestial rest break heart Drop blood, and mingle it with tears, Tears falling from repentant heaviness, Of thy most vile and loathsome filthiness. The stench whereof corrupts the inward soul, With such flagitious crimes of heinous sin, As no commiseration may expel. But mercy, Faustus, of thy Saviour sweet, Whose blood alone must wash away thy guilt. Where art thou, Faustus, wretch? what hast thou done damned art thou faustus damned despair and die hell calls for right and with a roaring voice says faustus come thine hour is almost come and faustus now will come to do thee right mephistophilus gives him a dagger ah stay good faustus stay thy desperate steps i see an angel hovers over thy head and with a vial full of precious grace offers to pour the same into thy soul then call for mercy and avoid despair ah my sweet friend i feel thy words to comfort my distressed soul leave me a while to ponder on my sins i go sweet faustus but with heavy cheer fearing the ruin of thy hopeless soul exit accursed faustus where is mercy now i do repent and yet i do despair hell strives with grace for conquest in my breast what shall i do to shun the snares of death thou traitor faustus i arrest thy soul for disobedience to my sovereign lord revolt or i'll in piecemeal tear thy flesh sweet mephistophilus entreat thy lord to pardon my unjust presumption and with my blood again i will confirm my former vow i made to lucifer do it then quickly with unfeigned heart lest greater danger do attend thy drift 
torment sweet friend that base and crooked age that durst dissuade me from thy lucifer with greatest torments that our hell affords his faith is great i cannot touch his soul but what i may afflict his body with i will attempt which is but little worth one thing good servant let me crave of thee to glut the longing of my heart's desire that i might have unto my paramour that heavenly helen which i saw of late whose sweet embracings may extinguish clean those thoughts that do dissuade me from my vow and keep mine oath i made to lucifer faustus this or what else thou shalt desire shall be performed in twinkling of an eye re-enter helen was this the face that launched a thousand ships and burnt the topless towers of ilion sweet helen make me immortal with a kiss kisses her her lips suck forth my soul see where it flies come helen come give me my soul again here will i dwell for heaven is in these lips and all is dross that is not helena i will be paris and for love of thee instead of troy shall wertenberg be sacked and i will combat with weak menelaus and wear thy colours on my plumed crest yea i will wound achilles in the heel and then return to helen for a kiss oh thou art fairer than the evening air clad in the beauty of a thousand stars brighter art thou than flaming jupiter when he appeared to hapless semele more lovely than the monarch of the sky in wanton arethusa's azured arms and none but thou shalt be my paramour exeunt enter the old man accursed faustus miserable man that from thy soul excludest the grace of heaven and fliest the throne of his tribunal seat enter devils satan begins to sift me with his pride as in this furnace god shall try my faith my faith vile hell shall triumph over thee ambitious fiends see how the heavens smile at your repulse and laugh your state to scorn hence hell for hence i fly unto my god exeunt on one side devils on the other old man enter faustus with scholars ah gentlemen what ails faustus ah my sweet chamber fellow had i lived with thee then had i lived still but now i die eternally look comes he not comes he not what means faustus belike he is grown into some sickness by being over solitary if it be so we'll have physicians to cure him tis but a surfeit never fear man a surfeit of deadly sin that hath damned both body and soul yet faustus look up to heaven remember god's mercies are infinite but faustus offence can ne'er be pardoned the serpent that tempted eve may be saved but not faustus ah gentlemen hear me with patience and tremble not at my speeches though my heart pants and quivers to remember that i have been a student here these thirty years oh would i had never seen wertenberg never read book and what wonders i have done all germany can witness yea all the world for which faustus hath lost both germany and the world yea heaven itself heaven the seat of god the throne of the blessed the kingdom of joy and must remain in hell for ever hell ah hell for ever sweet friend what shall become of faustus being in hell for ever yet faustus call on god on god whom faustus hath abjured on god whom faustus hath blasphemed ah my god i would weep but the devil draws in my tears gush forth blood instead of tears yea life and soul oh he stays my tongue i would lift up my hands but see they hold them they hold them who, who faustus? faustus 
Lucifer and Mephistopheles. Ah, gentlemen, I gave them my soul for my cunning. God, God forbid. forbid. God forbid it, indeed, but Faustus hath done it. For vain pleasure of twenty-four years has Faustus lost eternal joy and felicity. I writ them a bill with mine own blood. The date is expired, the time will come, and he will fetch me. Why did not Faustus tell us of this before? That divines might have prayed for thee. Oft have I thought to have done so, but the devil threatened to tear me in pieces if I named God, to fetch both body and soul if I once gave ear to divinity. And now, tis too late. Gentlemen, away, lest you perish with me. Oh, what shall we do to save Faustus? Talk not of me, but save yourselves and depart. God will strengthen me. I will stay with Faustus. Tempt not God, sweet friend, but let us into the next room, and there pray for him. Ay, pray for me, pray for me, and whatever noise soever ye hear, come not unto me, for nothing can rescue me. Pray thou, and we will pray that God may have mercy upon thee. Gentlemen, farewell. If I live till morning, I'll visit you. If not, Faustus is gone to hell. Faustus, Faustus farewell. farewell. Exeunt scholars. The clock strikes eleven. End of Act Four. Act Five of Doctor Faustus. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Tragical History of Doctor Faustus by Christopher Marlowe, from the Quarto of 1604. Act Five. Scene one. Ah, Faustus, now hast thou but one bare hour to live, and then thou must be damned perpetually. Stand still, you ever-moving spheres of heaven, that time may cease and midnight never come. Fair nature's eye, rise, rise again, and make perpetual day. Or let this hour be but a year, a month, a week, a natural day, that Faustus may repent and save his soul. O oh, lente, lente curite noctis equi. The stars move still, time runs, the clock will strike, the devil will come, and Faustus must be damned. Oh, I'll leap up to my God. Who pulls me down? See, see where Christ's blood streams in the firmament. One drop would save my soul, half a drop. Ah, my Christ. Ah, red not my heart for naming of my Christ. Yet will I call on him. Oh, spare me, Lucifer. Where is it now? Tis gone. And see, where God stretcheth out his arm and bends his ireful brows. Mountains and hills, come, come and fall on me and hide me from the heavy wrath of God. No, no. Then will I headlong run into the earth Earth, gape! Oh, no, it will not harbour me. You stars that reigned at my nativity, whose influence hath allotted death and hell. Now draw up Faustus, like a foggy mist, 
into the entrails of yon labouring clouds that when you vomit forth into the air my limbs may issue from your smoky mouths so that my soul may but ascend to heaven ah half the hour is past twill all be past anon o oh god if thou wilt not have mercy on my soul yet for christ's sake whose blood hath ransomed me impose some end to my incessant pain let faustus live in hell a thousand years a hundred thousand and at last be saved oh no end is limited to damned souls why wert thou not a creature wanting soul oh why is this immortal that thou hast ah pythagoras met him Socosus. were that true this soul should fly from me and i be changed unto some brutish beast all beasts are happy for when they die their souls are soon dissolved in elements but mine must live still to be plagued in hell cursed be the parents that engendered me no faustus curse thyself curse lucifer that hath deprived thee of the joys of heaven oh it strikes it strikes now body turn to air or lucifer will bear thee quick to hell into little water drops and fall into the ocean ne'er be found enter devils my god my god look not so fierce on me adders and serpents let me breathe a while ugly hell gape not come not lucifer i'll burn my books ah mephistophilis Exeunt Devils with Faustus. Scene two. Enter chorus. Cut is the branch that might have grown full straight, and burned is Apollo's laurel bough that sometime grew within this learned man. Faustus is gone regard his hellish fall whose fiendful fortune may exhort the wise only to wonder at unlawful things whose deepness doth entice such forward wits to practise more than heavenly power permits exit terminat hora diem terminat octor opus End of Act 5 End of Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe